This is video podcast 19 from learningradiology.com. Dislocations of the shoulder. I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. This podcast is going to focus on dislocations of the shoulder, anterior, posterior, and inferior dislocations. The next podcast will be dislocations of the hips, posterior, anterior, and central. Anterior dislocations of the shoulder are the most common type. 96% of all of the dislocations are anterior dislocations. The mechanism is a force directed against the shoulder in external rotation and abduction. They tend to occur in younger individuals and there is a relatively high recurrence rate. Clinically, patients tend to hang the affected arm down by their side as is shown here in this netter drawing. Care must be taken to evaluate for the presence of axillary nerve damage, which can occur with an anterior dislocation. The imaging findings in an anterior dislocation are that the humeral head lies under the coracoid process. They're called subcoracoid dislocations at times. A hill sax deformity may be present about half of the times. A hill sax deformity is actually a fracture, which is an impaction of the posterior lateral surface of the humerus as it strikes the anterior rim of the glenoid on dislocating. And there may be a Bankart fracture, which is a fracture of the anterior rim of the glenoid. This is an example of an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. The H is on the humeral head, which lies medial and inferior to the glenoid, marked by the G. The white arrow is pointing to a comminuted fracture of the greater tuberosity. This is a wide view of the shoulder. It's a lateral view of the scapula. On this normal wide view, you can see that the glenoid, which is marked here by the white oval, lies midway between the posterior acromion, marked with an A, and the anterior coracoid process, marked with a C. The humeral head lies centered on the glenoid. This is a patient who has an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. In this individual, the humeral head lies inferior and medial to the glenoid and beneath the coracoid process, which is marked with a C. This is an axillary view of the shoulder in an individual with an anterior shoulder dislocation. The white arrow is pointing to the area where the impaction fracture or the hill sacs deformity will occur as the posterior lateral aspect of the humeral head strikes the anterior rim of the glenoid. Remember that the coracoid process is anterior, the acromion is posterior, and you can see that the humeral head lies anterior to the glenoid. This is another example of a hill sax deformity. The white arrow is pointing to the deformity along the lateral aspect of the humeral head. It only takes one dislocation of the shoulder to produce a hill sax deformity. The G represents the glenoid, the A, the acromion, and the C, the coracoid process. This is what a Bankart fracture looks like. This is a fracture of the anterior rim of the glenoid as the humeral head strikes it on dislocating. This shoulder has been reduced. There is no dislocation demonstrated. Posterior dislocations of the shoulder are relatively uncommon. They not infrequently go unrecognized in up to 50% of patients initially. They typically require another view besides a frontal view of the shoulder, such as a Y view, an axillary, or a transthoracic lateral in order to be demonstrated. Posterior dislocations of the shoulder are produced by axial loads on an adducted and internally rotated arm. They are usually traumatic. They can occur with convulsive disorders or with electroshock therapy. Non-traumatic causes of a posterior dislocation include congenital or developmental causes, and occasionally children can voluntarily produce posterior dislocations. The imaging findings are the humeral head comes to lie under the acromion process. Regardless of what position the arm is turned, the humeral head tends to remain in a fixed internal rotation position, which is called the light bulb sign. 
and the trough sign is a fracture along the anteromedial aspect of the humeral head as the humeral head strikes the posterior rim of the glenoid on dislocating. This is an example of a posterior dislocation of the shoulder. The light bulb sign, wrong light bulb, there, the light bulb sign refers to the shape of the humeral head, and the red arrow is pointing to the edge which forms the trough fracture along the anteromedial aspect of the humeral head. This is what the Y view, or the lateral view of the scapula, looks like in an individual with a posterior shoulder dislocation. First, this is the normal view, showing again that the humeral head, the red circle, is centered on the glenoid. And here's an individual with a posterior dislocation. You see that the humeral head lies outside of the glenoid, underneath the acromion process in this case, not the coracoid, as in an anterior dislocation. This is an axillary view of an individual with a posterior dislocation. That is the humeral head, which lies outside the glenoid, marked by the G, and closer to the acromion than to the coracoid process. A rare cause of dislocation of the shoulder is an inferior dislocation. The mechanism is severe hyperabduction. The humeral head rotates so that the articular surface faces inferiorly. There are complications that are associated with this type of dislocation, including tears to the rotator cuff, neurovascular injuries, including injuries to the axillary nerve, and fractures of the acromion. The extremity is held over the head and can't be lowered. The glenoid fossa may be empty and the humeral head can be sometimes palpated in the axilla. This is a photograph of an individual with luxatio erecta, an inferior dislocation, and you'll notice that the arm is up over the patient's head. The imaging findings include an arm which is held upright about 45 degrees over the head and that the humeral head faces inferiorly. The head will lie inferior to the glenoid. And this is an example of an inferior dislocation. The blue arrows are pointing to the articular surface of the glenoid, which is pointing inferiorly. The red arrow is pointing to the glenoid. You could see that the head lies inferior to the glenoid. The C is the coracoid process, the A, the acromion. You'll notice that the arm is held at about a 45 degree angle upward. So to recap, anterior dislocations of the shoulder are the most common by far. The key terms to remember are Hill-Sachs deformity and Bankart fracture. For a posterior dislocation, which is relatively uncommon, the key terms are trough fracture and the light bulb sign. And for the rare inferior dislocation or luxatio erecta, the arm is held in a fixed position at about 45 degrees upward. Here is your mini quiz. You can pause your computer or MP3 player to decide what kind of shoulder dislocation this represents. This is an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. We can see that the humeral head lies under the coracoid process, medial and inferior to the glenoid, the typical location for an anterior or subcoracoid dislocation. The next video podcast will deal with dislocations of the hip.